Now to test the receive part, I will put a small speaker which is connected to the output of the signal generator part of the instrument. And I will close the lid and move the box in a more easier position to have access to um, the circuit, the lights, the panel and the interface. So first it is with the volume switched on with no carrier received we should have uh, on the air RX pin minus 12 or well, minus something which we have and on the detect carrier uh, pin uh, also minus 12 or minus something well it's okay so let's switch the transmitter on and we want 1650 hertz for the standby carrier so one six five zero enter and we have a light yeah carrier uh, light uh, switched on correctly uh, notice that this is um, an actual lamp is not a LED let's switch off the transmitter so uh, I will try to show you a nice feature of this um, you see the two lamps the two indicator lamps are lightly glowing if I uh, switch the power off they extinguish if I switch on they both uh, light uh, faintly this is not leakage or a broken circuit this is actually intended I check it on the, on the actual circuit uh, because normal lamps uh, will uh, burn faster and break faster if they are subject to um, large thermal shocks uh, in this way uh, the filament is always uh, lightly warm and can withstand uh, the passing time on off switches of the the indicator lamps more for for longer time so this is a really thought of uh, circuit so let's uh, give it a uh, carrier again and check the circuit on the on the serial port so with the idle carrier we should find on the uh, receive line minus yeah because it's still idle but we should have plus uh, 12 or something on the data carrier which we have so data carrier detect works and let's see what happens when I switch to the uh, active tone okay the tone is uh, 1850 And we have two lamps now data and carrier of course so data is actually received data not transmitted um, and we should have plus yeah, on the uh, RS232 interface receive line yes so far so good plus is zero on the RS232 mm, yes so so far so good now let's see um, the actual uh, frequency threshold for the two frequencies because the interesting thing is that uh, um, the receive port is uh, the second one 
this one where there is this uh, single multi turn trim so there is not um, a way to center for the two frequencies the receiver uh, frequencies but there is only one so i suspect and i will find out if uh, easily fits through but this is uh, setting only a, a passing threshold where um, the circuit senses a zero frequency or a one frequency so probably the, the threshold is in the middle of these two frequencies so if it's less than uh, the middle one which is 1750 it should report a one if it's uh, more than 1750 should report at zero uh, let's see if it's, uh, it is it true one seven six zero one, seven six zero we are yes we are still on the zero side so the two lights are light at the same time but uh, I should go to 1740 1740 and again it's on the zero side so let's go down again 1740 no 4 we have a really 4 1 ok one seven three zero yeah. it just distinguishes so the threshold uh, kind of works but it's a bit too um, too low for the, the, the sense is more more the zero part than the one so I guess I have to tweak we tweak a bit the, the setting and see if it works better as yes, I were right I'm on 1740 and tweaking a bit the trimmer made the light disappear this the data light disappear it means it is on the one side of the of the frequencies and see what happens when we are right in the middle one seven five zero zero yeah. and the, the middle is uh, still for for the zero but actually that can be uh, almost anything mm. there is no on right in the middle you cannot decide if it's a zero or one so probably i can stay a bit uh, higher or lower and doesn't matter anyway all the modems will be far away from the two um, from from the center of the frequencies so it's okay okay so far so good um, on the standby the one frequency for for the receive part 1650 hertz and the last test for the uh, receive part would be decreasing the uh, transmit level uh, to the speaker and see what is the threshold of uh, correct uh, uh, receive action for uh, for the modem. Just for comparison, this uh, same setup on the Apprentice Star acoustic coupler. Uh, cannot be um, cannot go low enough to make the apprentice star lose the carrier this goes to minus uh, 57 and uh, the apprentice uh, is able to correctly sense the carrier at that level and yeah, let's see what happens with this one well that's not very uh, it's passing. Uh, minus 12 will really lost the carrier detection. If I go to minus 11, it works. Well, I don't know. I don't know. 
I have to study the schematic and see if it's correct. It may be also the on the speaker not uh, being very aligned to to the microphone, but I don't know. It's a bit uh, too deaf. I don't know if uh, an actual test it will work. Okay, so I found. Um, Open it in the other compartment, and there is this little board which is a preamplifier for the microphone, which is inside here. Uh, quickly drown the schematic of this piece uh, of electronics and measuring on the actual circuit, there is. Uh, very low bass drop here and almost correct bass drop on this transistor but if I test the junctions with the multimeter uh, at power off the transistor look uh, good and it seems the circuit is also good there is minus 12 here plus 12 here so this should be basically um, kind of Darlington uh, current buffer I don't know what type of microphone is this but uh, can be uh, maybe a carbon uh, microphone uh, or I don't know anyway they, they, it doesn't seem to be normal to this, this uh, VBE uh, base to emitter into low like uh, 0 0.1 volts here it, it seems it's not correct so I will try to uh, remove this uh, transistor and see if changing or maybe this resistor is not okay even well I have to troubleshoot this circuit for sure okay the problem of uh, the polarization uh, has been found and it was actually this black wire uh, this this black wire is what I added and uh, the problem was the ground return was made uh, through the this coaxial cable which goes to the main board and the ground return is uh, uh, the shield of this coaxial cable and it was interrupted inside the, uh, the, this uh, head shrink tubing which is this is the new one so uh, uh, there was no ground return on this uh, little preamplifier before so let's uh, try again with the test and see what happens okay I changed uh, a bit the setup I extracted the microphone and put uh, my little speaker inside it so to be more fair in, uh, in the test we have a carrier detect and the level is minus 42 this is the limit of this uh, acoustic coupler with the fixed preamplifier but it's okay it's only 10 dBs well 10 to 15 dBs worse that, uh, than the Prentice star but the Prentice star is uh, uh, more than 7 uh, years newer than this one uh, using better components, uh, integrated circuits and so on so all in all it's a great design uh, if I go to minus uh, 43 but still the car but it's intermittent so it's not reliable well I see a good result uh, I think uh, well, next step uh, will be testing uh, on with an, uh, an actual modem connection uh, to my test setup. Okay, just an information we, while I'm closing. I had to remove that little form uh, that I thought it would help uh, keeping the boards uh, uh, more still because it wouldn't. Uh, close completely the, the lead with the small uh, form 
thickness so it looks like the actual boards touch the the bottom of the compartment with but anyway the modem uh, uh, has to stand uh, these are the feet uh, so this is the bottom side of the modem if uh, it is not uh, kept in the wrong position the boards shouldn't move too much inside <laughs>